Gaussian Blur may be one of the most powerful and most underused tools at our disposal. I mean, after all, if you're developing an image, why on earth would you want to blur it? But the smooth blur of the Gaussian tool can have incredibly positive effects on any image, though the tool is powerful and must be used with discretion. I find it's best to think of the Gaussian Blur tool, like all the tools in any photo processing application, like the various paints and brushes at an artist's disposal. Use each gently, only when needed, and only in so much as is called for. But, when used well, the Gaussian Blur tool can be an incredibly powerful tool for dealing with artifacts, noise, and mud in an image. For this video, I'm going to use the Wizard Nebula, which is a project I am currently working on and won't be done till I get at least one more clear night so I can get more information on the red and green channels. And I'm going to use the Gaussian Blur to compensate for the mud in the image that results from not enough information on those red and green channels. Now personally, I think the image is pretty good already. I have a lot of information, especially in the L and blue channels, and enough in the red and green to get a pretty good outcome with some signal cultivation techniques. And signal cultivation techniques are all about strengthening the apparent signal. You can't strengthen the actual signal, that's just the result of integration time. But signal cultivation is making what is there appear to be stronger than it is. And the Gaussian Blur tool is very helpful with that. Let's dive in. So as I see it's in this image, I have good information, especially on the blue channel, because I spent a whole night on blue alone. And very good information on the L channel, because I spend about half my time collecting information on the L channel, pretty much always. The L channel is very efficient at gathering in light, and so it's the best place to find definition. But the comparative weaknesses in the RNG, I do have a lot of RNG information already, but it's just not strong enough. So it leads to this sloppy or muddy effect I'll show up here, and over here, down here, and over here. Those artifacts are not the result of the actual image, they are mud introduced by a weak signal. So, using the five days worth of information on the Wizard Nebula that I do have, I can improve its appearance now by clearing up that mud. Now, areas of weak signal are also playgrounds for noise, and by clearing up the mud, as a positive side effect, I'll also remove a lot of the noise out in those areas. So as you can see, I'm already well into developing this image. It's been stacked in PixInsight, where I've already done some deconvolving, sharpening, denoising, histogram stretching, and curves adjustment. And as is my usual procedure in my workflow, I then saved the starless and star plates as lossless TIFFs, exported them, and then opened them in my favorite non-destructive layer-based photo editor, Affinity Photo. You could just as well do this procedure on any other layer-based photo editor that I know of, such as Photoshop, or perhaps GIMP. I haven't used GIMP in ages though, so I'm not entirely sure. But I know some of you out there are using GIMP, and if you have good luck with these techniques in GIMP, please let me know. I'd, I'd love to know more about it, I just honestly don't have time to experiment with it. But now let's go ahead and apply Gaussian Blur to the task of removing that noise and mud. Now I need the Gaussian Blur to operate on everything within this image, not any one individual layer. So I'm going to select all the active layers, those are the layers with white dots beside them, right click on it and select the Merge Visible option. This will merge all the visible layers into a new pixel layer. The Merge Visible option leaves the original layers, so I'll just turn them off, they won't be needed going forward. Alright, I've merged the layers off screen, and now we're working on our pixel layer, and we'll go ahead and introduce the Gaussian Blur tool. At this point, what I'm going to do is move the radius slider up, slowly increasing the effect of the Gaussian Blur tool until the mud in the muddiest region of the image has disappeared. The Gaussian Blur tool is a powerful tool. You only want to use as much of it as is necessary, and it looks to be that 21.6 pixels of radius on the Gaussian Blur tool will do the job. Of course, now we have a problem. Now the image is blurry, and that's even a worse problem than mud in the image. So how did the Gaussian Blur help? Well, we have to do another step. What I'm going to do is now open the paintbrush tool, set the paintbrush tool for mask and the color for black, and this will allow me to selectively erase out the effect of the Gaussian Blur tool, and I'm going to erase out its effect over those regions of the nebula where the detail is good. That way, a viewer's eye will be drawn to the sharper areas of the nebula, and the blurred out areas will appear smooth, as if they naturally belong there, even creating a small depth of field effect. All right, let's get to work. This is just like working magic with light. It is important to be sure to use a very soft brush so that the transition between the areas where the Gaussian Blur is in full effect versus the areas where the Gaussian Blur has been entirely erased is subtle and gentle. 
as a stark transition between definition and softness would easily catch the eye as unnatural. And you can see right here I was experimenting with removing the Gaussian blur from the edges of the nebula, but there just is not enough signal there yet, so in the end I decided to leave the Gaussian blur applied. It's often useful to turn on the stars as well, because screen compositing the star plate back over the nebula plate helps to gain a more complete perspective of what the Gaussian blur will accomplish within the final image. And this is what I'm going for. I want nice, smooth space, no mud, and minimal noise in the regions of the weakest signal. Let's pop ahead much further into the developing process. Here, much further into the process, I have further strengthened the signal by ortonizing it and increasing the vibrance. If you would like to see the first video on using the Orton technique on astro images, just follow the link on the above right. I've also folded the high frequency information back into the image to increase the apparent signal definition. That's described in a recent video, Extract and Composite High Frequency Information Back into an Image. And if you'd like to watch that video, you can view it by hitting the link also appearing now up into the right. So what I want to do now as I'm getting very close to finishing the image is touch up the effects of the Gaussian blur even more. Getting close to the final development has given me a greater sense of where the definition is going to be found within the final image. And that is revealed a few places where I want a little Gaussian blur. There's some sharpness there that I want in the image, but I want enough Gaussian blur to deal with the mud. To accomplish this task, I'll select the Gaussian blur layer and then the paintbrush tool. I'll make sure the paintbrush tool is once again set to mask and select the color white. Black tells the masking paintbrush to mask out the effect of an adjustment layer and white tells the paintbrush tool to paint that masking layer back in. I'm going to set my hardness to zero, which makes a very soft brush and my flow to 20 so that the brush only has about a 20% effect every time I pass it over something. And using these settings, I'll paint back in just a little bit of the Gaussian blur over a few select areas within the image. This will allow those regions to show a little more of their detail, but also retain enough blur to hide the mud. So I'll start off by putting a little detail back into the wisps of blue gas in the center and center right of the image. And then I'll restore a little bit of detail to the muddy region where the blue gas is left center of the image. And then I'll restore a little of the detail to the red gas off on the bottom right. Then with just a little bit more development, we get a final image that looks like this. Well, I should say a near final image. I do want to get one more night entirely on the red and green channels in order to further define the information strictly within those ranges of color. But the judicious application of the Gaussian blur tool was able to allow us to make use of what signal was already there and then to pretty much entirely remove the mud from those areas where the signal is weak. Removing the mud doesn't do anything to put information in those areas but mud catches the eye. Removing the signal allows the eye to be drawn to the area where the information is strongest and the regions of the image where the information is weakest, therefore the muddiest and noisiest, tend to be interpreted by the eye as something akin to depth of field. The strategic and judicious use of Gaussian blur to remove mud, artifacts, and noise can be applied to many images and many circumstances. It's just important to use discretion because it is a very powerful tool and the difference between benefiting an image with it and ruining an image is very small. I hope that helps you with your own processing going forward. If you have any thoughts or questions or observations, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you like this video, take a moment to like and subscribe because there will be a lot more like it and studies of astronomy itself, since I suspect most of us share a passion for the stars. All right, thank you for watching. Now get out there and shoot the sky.